On this episode, we wall crawl with everyone's favorite webhead, Spider-Woman. So get ready to send that Action Comics number one into PGX, because you're listening to a Kind of Garbage first-hand cameo podcast. Hey, it's a kind of... What's up, everyone, and welcome to First and Cameo. Today, we're talking all things Jessica Drew, Spider-Woman. I'm Adam Bishop, and just like last episode, I am here with... Dan Collins. Dan, I think this was your selection, correct? Um, yes, but don't blame me if this episode sucks. Ooh, it's a um, sophomore slump. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the first question is, um, how, many, how many slabs did you look up and research for today's topic? I looked up uh, three, three or four. Three or four. I have five. <laughs> it's a lazy kind of day for me. And I f- and just like um, our last episode, my eBay alerts have already been telling me, it's like, hey, Adam, do you want to buy some Spider-Woman comics? And I'm like, no, no, I don't. <laughs> Maybe after we're done this episode, do you want to go back and buy some of those? Oh, it's true. I'm, I'm, I've already gotten the 10% off notification. Be like, hey, sir, do you want to buy this um, CBCS book? And I'm like, I'm okay. Even though some people probably would want to grab it. I'm just, yeah, I'm not a huge Spider Woman guy. If you had asked me before this. Who, you like, son of a bitch. I want that code. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you asked me before this um, what her secret identity was, I wouldn't have been able to tell you. Yeah, and I have to take issue with your intro. Everybody's favorite web head is definitely not Spider-Woman. No, it's um, Scarlet Spider-Gwen. Spider. Oh, Spider-Gwen. <laughs> <laughs> or Spider-Girl. Or Clone Spider-Man. Oh, I, um, to go off topic already, I love the Clone Saga. I have the five Marvel Epic. Sorry, I think of four of the Marvel Epic books since the five part series. I just can't bring myself to pay like $30 for the fifth one and then start having to dive into the Ben Riley um, books as well. Every week you're like, I just can't, I can't bring myself to, to pay this small amount of money for something that oh, I know. Yeah. Well, I you just love pre-ordered this, them just buy it. <laughs> I should. <laughs> but then I'd have to start rereading them because I don't remember where I finished, even though I could probably just like crack it open and like see where the crease is in the spine. <laughs> Comics aren't for reading. That's why we're talking about CGC books. That's true, because you can't read them. No, you can't. But unless you're like me, you know, because one of these uh, Spider-Woman issue number one, I have physical CGC and also the essential collection so i can read it three ways baby isn't the essential collection in black and white it is in black and white yep black and white like newspaper print well you can just get bring over the kids and have them color it in for you i could but they won't color (laughs) in the lines no all right so what is your first slab and i can let i'm gonna assume i have your first slab on my list as well and i went in order by i think date of publication Okay, so the first slab that I have to talk about is Marvel Spotlight 32. My number one as well. Your number one. Written by Archie Goodwin. Pencils by Sal Bushima. Bushima. CGC Notes. Marvel Comics. February 77. Origin and first appearance of Spider-Woman. Jessica Drew. Nick Fury appearance. So I have the same thing. I also have the CBCS notes for that, which say, first appearance and origin of Spider-Woman. Jessica Drew. Nick Fury cover and appearance. Interesting. Now, I could not find a PGX version of this book. <laughs> I'm, you know, I I respect your commitment that you're uh, looking up PGX books and going to get PGX recommendations on your uh, eBay. <laughs> eBay's like somebody's looking quick. <laughs> so um, I did um, write down the grade for CGC, which was um, I looked through sold. I found um, the most recent. I didn't write down the date and I regret it, but I think it was like January 24th. First or 14th and i have cgc 8.5 which sold at 314.24 i guess i should say 314 dollars 24 cents with 18 dollars and 87 cents shipping within canada or i guess from canada i do not have the cbcs pricing i didn't write that down for whatever reason so you you could only find like you didn't find any other ones i didn't even look <laughs> I just went for the most recent because I was just like, oh, this is the most recent price so people can understand. That's an 8.5. It's not even a 9.6 or a 9.8 at three, 315 plus shipping. 
Yeah. Now, see, like, I think that um, you should have looked up 9.8 and just seen what the last 9.8s were, because those would have been, a you know, a 9.8, you know, is the maximum you're going to spend on anything, right? Yeah, but I don't know, it, was, it was the most recent. Like, if it was a 5.0, I still would have picked it. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of 9.8s, I looked up the census, and uh, for CGC, there is 184 9.8s, 577 9.6s, and 259 9.4s on the census. But you didn't look up 8.5? I didn't know you were going to bring up an 8.5. Why would I think that you're going to bring up an 8.5? <laughs> That's true. It's ridiculous. So, so this book, um, I guess my biggest complaint about it is she doesn't have the cutout for her hair yet. And I couldn't find which, I guess I kind of know which one it was, where they actually like gave her her flowing hair. Because... I feel that when you put a woman, or I guess a woman comic book character in a like full mask, like yep. I, I don't, I don't like it. it. It doesn't work for me. Yeah. So this costume, she's in this costume for one. Let's see, she's in this costume for five, five episodes, episodes, five issues, five issues. <laughs> How about the plot for this one? Okay, because okay. it's origin and first appearance of Spider Woman. I also have this one. So I have this one as a CGC myself, uh, 9.0, that I think I paid around 200 bucks for about four or five years ago. So I have a 9.0, but I also have this one as a raw copy. This was actually the first key comic that I ever bought at a convention. I picked it up at like Fan Expo or uh, whatever, one of, the, one of the Toronto conventions, somewhere around like 2005-ish, 2005, 2005, no geez, 2015. Somewhere in that area. And I spent 60 bucks on it. And uh, so it was the first, this was one of those things where like I walked around, I saw it, I was like, oh, that's cool. I really want it. And then I walked around for three hours going like, uh, should I get it? Shouldn't I get it? Should I get it? Shouldn't I get it? Asking everybody that I knew. And they're all like, buy the damn thing and shut up already. And I was like, oh, but it's 60 bucks. And so then eventually I went back. I bought it. I've read that copy because I had that before I got my... Uh, before I got my essential collection. So I read that copy and uh, then a few years later decided to buy the CGC 9.0. For the the raw copy that you get, did you haggle the price down or did you just slap the 60 bucks to the guy? I am not a haggler at all. Uh, not at oh, all. Oh, it's embarrassing. It's, it's, it's the absolutely worst thing embarrassing. to do. Hey, I see that's a 60 bucks. Will you take 55? No. Okay, I'm just gonna go dive embarrassment now. Now, if I remember correctly, when we went to the one of the comic um, cons, you got to witness me try and haggle, right? I I vaguely recall this. Vaguely recall. <laughs> I think it was right at the start. It was for a Highlander sword, which I which I forgot to even pick up on our way out. And you're like, "Hey, Adam, aren't you gonna go get your like your sword?" <laughs> yeah. Now, now you were successful though, weren't you? You're, you're haggling. Um, you actually got him down a little bit, I think. Yeah, m my trick, which I recommend everyone do if you're going to a convention with cash go to the bank and get like your your three four hundred dollars get like at least two hundred dollars in fives because near the end of any of these conventions they are dying for change they want small bills you're like i have a 20 it's like do you have any fives you're like no so i always bring a wad of fives so i can be like can i get it for this much and they'd be like no i'm like how about that much, but with fives? And they're like, wait, what? And then you pull it out and they're like, oh, I get it. Like they will bite for your fives. And it's amazing to see. Yeah, because basically they're turning sales away because they don't have change Yeah, for other customers. Yeah. And yeah, I remember um, we you took that, you took that sword on the go train. <laughs> it was in a box. It was in a box. Yeah, we had to go back at the very end of the convention and pick it up. And then you carried it in a box. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and, and I had a stack, I had a stack of, of trades because that was at that point, I thought that trade paperbacks, this is, was this the same time, the same day you bought web of Spider-Man number one? Oh, I don't know. It must, we didn't go to that many conventions together. Did we? We've been to at least two because there was the one where you were waiting in line for the Green Lantern, which might have been the same. That was the one that we saw Bob and Cloud and I got him to sign my new mutants number one. I don't, I don't, I, know. I don't recall. <laughs> Funny story, Adam is responsible for me being a, an actual comic book collector and not just <laughs> buying everything in trades because on the ride home from one of these trips, you were we were talking about comics and you had picked up Web of Spider-Man, number one, CGC 9.6. 
and we were talking about comics being valuable. And I looked at my stack of trades that I bought, like spent a hundred bucks, got an entire like huge bag full of trades. And I was like, well, these are great to read, but they're not going to be worth anything. If I bought these as single issues, they might be worth something later. So thank you. And I hate you. <laughs> I don't even know where that Web of Spider-Man went. I know I sold it. I just don't recall if I sold it on eBay or if I sold it to somebody I know. But yeah, that was that was my first slab and, it, and it's gone. <laughs> You're so, uh, that hurts me that you, you sold your first baby. And I have no idea where it is. <laughs> yeah, you don't even know. You don't even know who took this thing. You have no way to track it down and be like, oh, I want some good memories with that thing again. I'm actually just... Now I've decided to get up and wander around my apartment and try to find my first slab. <laughs> my first slab that I ever bought, pulling it out here, but you can't see it. Tales of Suspense, number 59. Marvel Comics, November 1964. It's a lowly 2.5, but this is the, uh, what, it's from 1964. It's a 2.5, yeah. and this is... Uh, Iron Man, Captain America, double feature, first solo Captain America story since the 50s. And if you saw the cover, you'd be like, okay, yeah, it's that one. You know, not a, <laughs> not a super big key or anything, but like a minor key. And I think I paid like 70, 80 bucks for that. On, on eBay, Christmas Day, probably like 2015 or 2016, you know, open presents, ditched the family and started shopping on eBay. So... <laughs> Fun times, fun times. And that's that's actually amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what what is the plot of this book? Since I I've never <laughs> read it. <laughs> oh oh, we're, the plot. We were talking about the plot. Uh, so the plot is that Nick Fury comes under attack by a mysterious new villain, Arachne. Mm -hmm. She's created created by the High Evolutionary, who used his genetic accelerator to turn her, her from a literal spider into a woman. So he accelerated her evolution from spider to woman. She was later ostracized by the evolutionary's other creations. She left, fell in love, and accidentally killed her boyfriend. <laughs> she repressed these memories and then was taken advantage of by Hydra, who sent her after Nick Fury. Realizing she's been tricked, she turns on Hydra, kills some Hydra guy at the end, and then flies off into the sunset going like, I don't know who I am or what I'm going to be, whatever. And then that was the end of this issue. In my notes, I do have that she, yeah, she's ne she was never called Spider-Woman by herself. No. It was like Nick Fury and I was going to say his goons, but it was Nick Fury and company <laughs> that deemed, like named her Spider-Woman. Yeah. Yeah. So is this the, really the first appearance of Spider-Woman though, even though it's like plastered on the cover and she isn't officially going by that name? Yes, it is. Okay. Why wouldn't it? If, <laughs> if it's plastered on the cover, absolutely. It says Marvel Spotlight on the Spider-Woman. Yeah, one of the things I did read about this is the only reason why she was created, and you probably already know the story, right? Um, Sure, but don't ask me any follow-up questions. All right, so apparently the reason why she was created is because Stan Lee got cold feet thinking that <clears throat> a company like DC could make a character and call her spider woman because they didn't have a copyright for that. And that stemmed from DC having wonder woman and Marvel having wonder man. And then DC sued them and Stan goes, you know what? Fine. We're not going to do it. We got rid of wonder man for a while, but then they had power man in Marvel. And then a year later, DC made power girl. And then Stanley was just like, what the fuck? And so he did, he needs to make sure that he had the name. He's like, this isn't fair. And he thought it was, I guess, shitty for DC to do that after they just accused them of copying their names. And then DC goes and does that to them. Yeah. So now we have Spider-Woman, or as Nick Fury calls her on the final page, Spider-Dame. <laughs> Is Nick Fury Dick Tracy now? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. All right. So that was the first appearance and yeah. origin. And then yes. we jump to my second pick, which I'm going to assume is your second pick, which is Mar no, Marvel 2-in-1, number 29, published July 1977. Okay, that was, that was the same. I have the same one there, except my, I have my notes say May 1977. Ooh, maybe I typed it in wrong. <laughs> so yeah, my notes say Marvel Comics, May 77. Okay, well, agree to disagree. I, <laughs> I don't have a picture of the cover in front of me. I don't think we can. We have to agree to disagree. It's a, okay. So what you did is you looked at the cover, 
which is July, but it was actually published in May. Oh, okay. I thought I went by the CGC. Um, the CGC notes say May 77. I stand corrected. It is May 77. And yeah. here is what I have for the notes. <laughs> for CGC, it says Master of Kung Fu Appearance. For CBCS, I have nothing because I could not find anything. And the same for PGX. <laughs> So I searched up a few a few copies of this one because there's different notes. So I have you found master, different notes. Okay. Different notes. Master of Kung Fu. And I found a CGC one that says Spider Woman Cameo on last page. Yeah, one of the online notes that I found, I have written down just an online note, like a tidbit from a website, was Spider Woman Cameo on on last page, second appearance. Yeah. So this is the reason why I picked Spider Woman. Because what better second show than a episode about a weird second appearance? So her second appearance, it's, it's back in the heyday of the CGC discussion forums. They were talking about first appearances. And with first appearances skyrocketing in price, people were struggling to be able to afford them. Regular people couldn't afford first appearances. So people started buying second appearances because it's as close as they're going to get. And I saw a post that somebody was buying Marvel 2-in-1 issue number 30, which is the next one after this. Mm -hmm. And then they, which is, I would say, her actual first, or her actual second appearance, because she's in the entire book. But we'll get to that in a second. But they were <laughs> like, but no, Marvel 2-in-1 number 29 is Spider-Woman's second appearance in Cameo. And I scratched my head and said, does a cameo matter if it's not the first appearance? Like, there's literally no reason to care about a second appearance in cameo. I've seen CGC book that in the notes, I've seen it say second appearance, third appearance, fourth appearance. Like, they track that. And I'm like, how far do they track this with Marvel 2 and 1 number 29? They didn't even put anything in the notes for, I guess, the majority of them, where it's just like Master of Kung Fu appearance. And I believe he's on the cover of that book, isn't he? He is, yes. It's him and the thing. Yeah, so yeah. with Spider-Woman on the last page, I think that's her second appearance, because this is going into Wolverine territory, where it's just on, is it one panel, or is it just one page? It's one, it's one panel, but it is two-thirds of the page for this panel. Okay. It's the Final panel of the book, and we see it's literally the epilogue for the story. The story has ended, and then it's like, oh yeah, but... And it shows Spider-Woman captured by Hydra again and under their mind control again, setting up the next issue. I believe that if a character is in the story, in the panel of the book, that is an appearance. Uh, sure, sure. Technically, you're not wrong. However, is there... Is there any reason to care about the a second appearance in cameo from uh, Spider Woman? If <laughs> just from Spider Woman, that depends how big of a Spider Woman fan you are. Well, if you're a Spider Woman fan, you probably have this. But like, so some of those other ones you're talking about, where they track first appearance, second appearance, third appearance, those are like major, major characters. For example, like Wolverine, or also like I know, like Legion of Superheroes. They they have those, uh, you know, up to the third or fourth appearance. Because I was looking at some of those slabs a while back, maybe thinking about picking up one. So, like, those are major comics. Legion of Superheroes for a point five, you're going six, seven hundred bucks. You know, like it's it's that major of a same with same with Wolverine. Like, those are major major comics where they track the first, second, third, fourth appearance. This is Spider Woman. <laughs> Sure, sure, like Spider Woman's more popular right now than she was when I bought these books. But is she's she? still yeah, because because everything is well, I guess because but everything is more popular now. Everything's more expensive. Yeah. You know, like that eight point five for three fifteen you were saying for yeah. her first appearance, you know, that's more than I paid for my nine point oh. So <laughs> everything is getting more expensive. Spider Woman definitely is maybe a little more popular because everybody is banking on maybe an eventual MCU appearance. Yeah, with that said about the, the MCU appearances, that kind of um, is going to touch upon the New Mutants. That movie came out 
their, their books did not see an increase in price that I'm aware of because it's not part of the MCU. But if you put Spider-Woman in an MCU movie, you bet your ass that some of her books are going like, to go up in price. Yeah, and if you take the speculators out of it, like obviously they're going to drive up prices to a bigger degree but there definitely is you know like you see you see a character in a movie they do a good job you're like that character's cool i want to get their first appearance it's not you know that's not speculators driving the whole thing there is regular joes that do see these movies and go like oh that's cool i want to get that character now but so like should you pick up uh marvel 2 and 1 number 29 if you see it in the dollar bin because you think it's going to be a big comic someday because she appears on the final page for her second appearance. Maybe, depending on when we get into the next comic. But before we do that, <laughs> I, I wanted to get in before I forget that the CGC 9.8 that I saw on eBay that was sold went for 126.20 Canadian, so 126 20 cents Canadian, with yeah. 50, 57 dollars and 99 cents shipping from the u.s i couldn't find a canadian seller for this one unfortunately yeah now there's not a whole lot of these that were uh slabbed only 24 9.8s and 11 9.6s and 8 9.4 so this is a wow. this is a rarer book to find in a 9.8 but that's also because it's not actually a key comic so there's not that many people who have slabbed it yeah, if you don't agree with us, comment in the comments below and send us an email. <laughs> <laughs> send us your copy of Marvel 2 and 129 if you think it's not a key comic. No, they're going to be like, but, but Masters of Kung Fu, that's going to be its own. It's going to be in, in a Marvel <laughs> MCU movie. I can't get rid of that. He, he just appears. There's nothing in it. Like, And in fact, when I was doing my prep for this show, I was reading through these issues. And I skipped that one and just read the last page. I didn't even read anything, <laughs> anything about Master of Kung Fu. I just skipped it directly. All right. Do you want to hit up the next comic? Because I think I know what it is. It's probably my number three as well. Well, the next comic probably has to be Marvel 2-in-1 number 30, doesn't it? Yes. The actual second appearance of Spider-Woman. So this is a Marv Wolfman story. John Buscema and Pablo Marcos art. CGC notes Marvel Comics... August 77, and the notes just say Spider-Woman. Now, CBCS has a different note that does not say Spider-Woman. What does it say? Nothing? <laughs> All it says is Nick Fury appearance. <laughs> and that's so... Uh, Nick Nick Fury appearance. Oh, you know, sorry. Like... There, is, there is a second part to it, but go ahead. Nick Fury appearance. <laughs> oh, you, you go ahead. I'm just flipping through my book <laughs> looking to see where Nick Fury is in this thing. Oh, sorry. I lied. Um, Nick Fury's just on a TV screen. He's not even in appearance. this comic. He's on <laughs> a TV screen talking to the thing. And that counts for a Nick Fury appearance, but they don't say Spider-Woman. According to CBCS, yes. The online note is Spider-Woman recounts her origins from Marvel Spotlight number 32. Yeah, <laughs> she does. She does. My question is, is she recounting that she was an actual spider turned into a human? Um... I don't remember. She does a lot of recounting. She doesn't seem to know much about... Okay, wait. Here it is here. She doesn't... It doesn't say. It doesn't <laughs> say. It's a one-panel... It's a one-panel thing where she remembers the machine that she was in for the High Evolutionary. Oh, that's okay. It. So I, I feel like that's alluding that she was an insect turned into a human then. She's recounting that storyline sure sure you can say that you can say <laughs> that but when we get to our next comic i'll have something different to say okay well this one is actually her second appearance you know Third. she's no second <laughs> and she's under by the way i was wrong nick fury's in two panels on the tv screen <laughs> two whole panels okay <laughs> um, she's again under the influence of hydra she tries to kill ben Grimm. She steals his girlfriend and kidnaps her and then comes back and tries to kill him. And then in the end of the issue, there's an explosion and uh, the thing and Spider-Woman both fall into the into the Thames and apparently drown. But I, I never read the issue after this to find out if they make it. <laughs> I'm assuming they do. I didn't see like I looked up Marvel 2 and 1 number 31. Nowhere does it say on it that they're in the book. Yeah. I think Ben Grimm is because like this is his kind of series. Yep. But there was nothing indicating Spider-Woman on the cover or in the notes of any CGC books that I found. Yeah, like I was planning to read Spider-Woman's whole arc here, which is Marvel 2-in-1, number 29 to 33. 
Oh, but, okay. So season yeah, three Yeah, this more. was a whole arc, I but I ran out of time. <laughs> now, having said that, having said that so far, I read uh, number 29, just the final panel, as I said, and I read issue 30 here. And the story to issue 30 is great. Like if you take Spider-Woman out, it's actually, there's a great, like, there's a great almost, what was the name of that? You know, those Dan Brown books, you know, Dan Brown uh, yeah. did all those books, Da Vinci Code. There's a yeah, great but... like Da Vinci Code-esque story to this about some thieves who are stealing artifacts from across London because they all have little bits of a map on it that they're trying to find to lead them to a treasure. And those are actually like the non spider woman bad guys of this and there's two stories happening at once once about this these two thieves and the other one about spider woman and hydra trying to kill ben Grimm. and i i actually really like the story so i'm, I'm going to keep reading it so my cgc book that i found on ebay was a cgc 9.4 it sold at 126 dollars 14 cents with 49 dollars and 60 cents shipping from the united states the census, there was uh, 19 9.8s, 45 9.6s, I believe, and 23 9.4s. Okay. So, not bad, not bad. I think when you see, like, the 9.8s having less than the 9.6s, like, that's a good sign. It's like, I need to get that book because it's actually harder to find. Yeah. Because in theory, like, for some of these CGC books or even CBS, CBCS and PGX, as you go down in grade, in theory, you should get more because it's harder to keep books in good condition. Yeah. All right. Next. The next book. Okay. So the book that I have, you can let me know if it's the same, is Spider-Woman number one. Of course, it's the same. <laughs> the CGC note that I have is New Origin of Spider-Woman. Yes, I have the same, the same note. Marvel Comics, April... 78 new origin of spider woman now for cbcs i have a different note which is first spider woman in her own title origin of spider woman why doesn't the cgc say first spider woman in her own title they say that on all, all the other comics yep and i have i i have a pgx note i have one finally all right drop it like it's hot first spider woman in her own title and new origin of spider woman yeah so should, do you want to talk about that origin um, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I know so they, that she is not a spider. Yeah, so they took they took the spider out. They were like, uh, this is weird. We can't have her be literally a spider that's been turned into a woman. So instead, <clears throat> Jessica Drew, and also, uh, as I said, I haven't read Marvel 2-in-1, uh, 31, 32, or 33, so I don't know for sure. But this is the first time I've come across her being called Jessica Drew. Maybe she's named in one of those issues and I haven't got to it yet, but maybe she's not. So we'll have to put an annotation onto this and for a future episode. Yeah. But uh, so she's Jessica Drew. She is living with her mom and dad and another scientist. And they live out in the countryside and they discover a uranium mine or some big deposit of uranium and it makes them all rich. And they build this huge, like, super futuristic um, laboratory base there. And then one day, young Jessica Drew, who's like five or six, collapses. And they're like, it's radiation poisoning. I never thought that she would get radiation poisoning, even though we live on top of all this uranium. <laughs> yeah. And so they rush her into a, like, a cryogenic chamber. And then it turns out that that other scientist that's living with them is the high evolutionary. And so first, while Jessica's being put into the um, cryogenic chamber, her mom dies of a heart attack. <laughs> and then her dad just disappears. Literally, literally in the comic book, she says, while I was in there, my father disappeared. I don't know where he went. And like, so she's kept in this cryogenic chamber and experimented on by the high evolutionary to cure her radiation sickness for the next like 15 years or something. And then eventually, you know, she's saved and goes off to do her own thing. I'm just going to assume that her father turned into a spider. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to assume that her father is in issue two or three. And uh, that's yeah. the whole point. He but is like, Hydra. <laughs> <laughs> All of it. He's all of it. So yeah. Now I have I have a lot of copies of this comic book. Okay. 
I bought a, a comic book lot off of eBay back, you know, five or six years ago. Mm. And it had a whole bunch of Moon Knight number one and like maybe like 10 of these Spider Woman number one issues. And they were all super mint. OK, I'm going to say super mint. They were really mint, but I sold them for cheap because I didn't know how to grade comics. And I was afraid of somebody saying like I was overgrading them. So I always like lowballed on what they were worth and undergraded them and sold a few off for like 10 bucks a piece. And now they're worth like 30 to 40 bucks a piece. And I still have, I think, six or seven. So somebody I, got them and they, he looked at you, it's like $10, you fool. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, but not quite. It was more like when I sent, I sold them on eBay and like when the person got them and, and they left feedback about like how, you know, great the issue was or whatever, how the great shape the issue was in. Um, I also have a 9.6 that I picked up for about 70 or 80 bucks a while ago. You'd almost think I like Spider-Woman. I, I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, though. I don't know if I do. What grade was it? That you 9.6 got? that I got. 9.6, okay. One of the 1,720 9.6s that, that are out there. Oh, my God. And there's 1,378 9.8s and 917 9.4s. So the book that I found on eBay was a CGC 9.8 for $363.46 with yeah. $22.53 in shipping from Canada. And that was relatively like within a month or two. So that's insane how much that went for at a 9.8 considering how many there are. And also that it's not really a key comic. No. I mean, like a- it, it is a key comic, but not like a first appearance. It's just a new origin. Maybe that's something that people want. I don't know. It, it's it's a well, retcon book. It is a retcon book. And that's something that like, I know we've talked about on, on Hey Kids a little bit. But like, you know, Marvel Spotlight 32 was never going to be uh, Spider-Woman's actual origin. You know, this is them coming up with something, throwing it at the wall, seeing that the character was okay. But then you know, oh, we kind of wrote ourselves into a corner now that she's a literal spider that we <laughs> evolved into a human being. Like, that's too weird. We need to do something different. And so they start to walk it back a little bit through the successive issues. Like in Marvel 2 and 1, issue 30, they walk it back a little bit by not mentioning she was a literal spider. And then in the her Spider-Woman number one, her first solo title, she they walk it all the way back by adding in a mom and a dad and that she was never a spider to begin with. So I know that um, with the, was it the High Evolutionary? Yeah. That storyline was, everybody knows this, but that storyline was going to be used for Wolverine's original origin where they took a Wolverine and made him a human. And then when they did Spider-Woman and they saw how like fucking stupid it was, they scrapped that with Wolverine. <laughs> They're like, uh, maybe he wasn't a Wolverine. Maybe because there's um there's an issue where they meet a leprechaun and Wolverine says, I've never met a leprechaun. And the leprechaun says, I've never met a talking Wolverine before. Yeah. So that's just like, they had a storyline. I guess they're going to try and make, make Marvel superheroes named after animals and then be like, oh, <laughs> these, these were all really animals. And they scrapped it because it was dumb. It is dumb. And think think about how stupid it would have been if that was how Wolverine came about. Well, you could pet him and it wouldn't be weird. <laughs> you can still pet him if you want. It's true. My next issue, which I'm surprised you didn't pick it because I picked it from my research, which is Spider-Woman number 50. Okay. Um, I don't have as many notes on who wrote it and whatnot, but this one, if my dates are right, it was June 1983. And the CGC notes, um, there are no CBS or PGX notes. I couldn't find anything. The CGC notes are quote unquote death of Spider-Woman. With Lynn Luckman as Spider-Woman, it's a photo cover and the last issue. Okay. So that was the one I picked because it had it had a, a few notes on it. And I was like, oh, this is kind of neat. It had a Marvel staffer dressed up as Spider-Woman. Yes, and from, yes. Yeah, everything I read online, people were like, she looked really good in the suit. And I'm just like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe we shouldn't say it in such a sexual manner about one of your employees. It's like, did you see her figure? <laughs> like, <laughs> but yeah. for that one, yeah. The last sold CGC book was a 9.8 at $176.62 with $16.41 shipping from Canada. And I don't have any census data because I didn't pick that one. Uh, yeah, the um, the photo covers, I don't know. Like, 
I get it. I look at it and I'm like, oh, that's neat. It's it's cosplay. Like that's really what it is. Yeah. And they look amazing and they look very weird at the same time. They're very out of place. I hate them. Hate it. <laughs> yeah, it's um she definitely had that 80s hair where she yes. looked like she looked like she might have been from Twisted Sister. Yes, I have this issue. I have almost the whole Spider Woman run. Um, and I have this issue, but yeah, I haven't read it yet. And it's not in my um, Essential Spider-Woman only goes up to issue 25, so I haven't read it yet. So you need to get your Essential Spider-Man Volume 2, I'm assuming? If it exists. Do you they, think- might not have heard, they might never have put it out. They saw the sales of the first one, they're just like, nah. <laughs> nah. And I got, my, I got my Spider-Woman Essential Volume from a comic book store in Brantford, I think, way down south in on southern ontario when i was visiting the in-laws five or six years ago oh i only have i think i have three essential marvel books which are in black and white as well it was um x-men volumes one two and three i have a couple random uh wolverine ones some random uh fantastic four the punisher and spider woman i think one of the x-men ones that i have the thing that caught my eye about it is i think it was volume two the cover for it is done by bruce tim which is super out of place because it's in his style so you have like yeah. it looks like batman the animated series but they're x-men <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a very bizarre choice like the spider woman one is just the cover to spider woman number one which makes sense yeah did you know that there's a spider woman cartoon i recall seeing it i think it ran for like 13 episodes eight or 13 right yeah, I think it's 13 episodes. It's from 1979, I believe. And it is, if it's on Disney Plus, if you've got a Disney Plus membership, you should check this out just for the fun of it because it's ridiculous. Now, is that the first appearance of Spider Woman in a cartoon show? First appearance of Jessica Drew <laughs> as, <laughs> as the first appearance of Jessica Drew as the defendant in the sexual harassment suit. Oh, no, seriously? <laughs> no, not seriously, because it's the 70s. It's only awkward to watch now. She gets, she has, um, so she's like a reporter, or I think, I think she's honestly a writer for a fashion magazine, and the photographer for the, or she's, maybe she's the photographer and he's the writer. Either way, there's like her and a guy, and they're both working on the magazine, and he's hitting on her every every episode. He's hitting on her, and then her nephew comes into the room and and like breaks it up. He 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 cock blocks him. He comes <laughs> in. He looks. He says like, "Oh, there you are, Aunt Jessica. Let's go do this." Blah blah blah. And then like the guy will be like, the guy will say something like, "Oh, we were just having a chat." And this kid will look up at him, and go, "Yeah, I know." And then they walk out of the room like he literally it's like a gag like this kid keeps interrupting as she's being hit on by this guy. And it's just a gag in the show. It's it's uh, kind of super awkward, super awkward. It's be like, stop, stop trying to fuck her. <laughs> literally, literally. That's my aunt. Leave her alone. Oh. So, I mean, other than the horrible possible sexual harassment, this cartoon is hilariously ridiculous. <laughs> the first episode has mummies. Pyramids land all over the globe. They start, mummies start coming out. They start like brainwashing people and hypnotizing them and stuff. And they, Jessica Drew, Spider Woman, saves the day, saves the day by using math and realizing that they get all of their special powers through the angles of their pyramids and i can't remember how i do not recall how because this is going to sound so ridiculous when i say it she changes all their pyramids into squares and they run they fly off into space because they're losing their power now that they've been changed into cubes and they're no longer pyramids i'm not joking oh the 70s it was so like i've watched this episode twice i watched it once last year and literally like died laughing and then i watched it again in preparation for the show because i remembered how bad it was and it's it's so bad and spider (laughs) spider man is in it to help like because the thing is it's practically like a spider-man spinoff because spider-man you know always a big character and they're like let's have spider-man in here he'll get things rolling 
So Spider-Man comes in, immediately gets captured, and then Jessica Drew has to save him. Spider-Woman has to save him. And there's even like the, a funny part at the end where Spider-Man's like struggling to get free. And he uh, Spider-Woman's been captured, I think, and like somebody else is captured, all three of them. And Spider-Man's like, I'm almost through, through. I can almost get out. And then he finally breaks free from free of his bonds and then it the camera pulls back to reveal that the other guys have gotten out before him and are coming to rescue him <laughs> you know it's just a it's a hokey silly ridiculous show kind of fun but also cringy because of the times and stuff you just reminded me of um one of my favorite episodes from the fantastic four cartoon show that was on i think during the same time it's it's the episode where reed richards is fighting magneto and reed richard pulls a gun out on magneto being like magneto stop or i'll shoot you and magneto goes ah you fool it's like a, a gun it's like it's made of metal i can like i can get it like take it away from you and magneto tries and he can't do anything to this gun he's like what and Richard tells, I think Richard tells him, like, oh, like, I, I took away your powers with this gun. You no longer have your, pa- have your powers. Yes. And then the, the police show up and be like, you're under arrest, Magneto. He's like, oh, you got me. They handcuff Magneto and he's walking away. He's like, Richards, I need to know, how did you do it? And Richards goes, oh, this gun is made of wood. You had your powers all along. And Neil's like, oh, okay. And Magneto sits in the back of the police car <laughs> to take him away. <laughs> yes, yes. It's yes. my favorite episode. It's like, Magneto, you have your fucking powers. Rip that car in half. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> I don't, I honestly, I don't think I've seen that episode of that show, but I saw that exact same gimmick used in some other show very recently. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that was from the series where the Human Torch was not in it, but Herbie the robot was because they were afraid of kids lighting themselves on fire to imitate the Human Torch. But it's okay to have reed richards point a gun at somebody oh yeah it's the 70s nobody cared (laughs) (laughs) fire bad guns good america (laughs) america that's all for this episode tune in next week when we talk about adam's favorite quote superhero shatterstar who nobody gives a crap about oh thanks dan All right. Be sure to go to akindofgarbage.com, the website. You can also email at us at akindofgarbage at gmail.com with any comments you have. Send, send in your fan mail. This is the second episode. We're waiting. <laughs> We're also on Twitter and Instagram at a kind of garbage. on Facebook as well at a kind of garbage pod. And don't forget to check out the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash a kind of garbage where you can sign up for the $5 a month pledge, where you get extra episode every other week, where myself and uh, my other co-host, Cody Andrews, talk about movies. Finally, you can find myself on Twitter at Presto Adam, and with Dan Martin, Chris and Chris, on the Hey Kids Comics radio show, Friday nights at 8 p.m. on Trent Radio, 92.7 CFFFFM. And if you're interested in hearing my thoughts and opinions on something other than comics, you can check out my music discovery podcast, Gather Round the Listening Post. That's Gather Apostrophe Round the Listening Post, available on Spotify. With that, I'm Anna Bishop. And I'm Dan Collins. And don't forget to get pressed before you get graded. I'm shaking my head. Dan, do you know what really crinkles my comics? Adam, what crinkles your comics? Astonishing X-Men, number three and six. The first cameo and full appearance of Abigail Brand and Sword. I should have seen this coming. (laughs) We're topical. We're topical. Who cares about Abigail Brand? First of all, who is Abigail Brand? I don't know. Here's the thing. Astonishing X-Men. What I know about this is I watched the Astonishing X-Men motion comic DVD, which I own. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember these characters. Well, this character or Sword. I don't know who Sword is. And I've watched these comics on my TV. Well, maybe it's because you watch them on your TV. Like, maybe they're more important in the actual comic books. Like, wait, do they pick up a Sword in the in the TV show? No, Sword is an acronym. Oh, I, which I have no idea what it stands for. The only thing I remember about this comic, and I think I've talked to you in the past, 
is Kitty Pride is now a teacher at Xavier Institute. I guess it's not the Institute, but a school, whatever it's called. And she's talking to a student. She's trying to have like a heart to heart with a student. And then the kid looks at her and they bleep it out. But he says, Miss Pride, are you a fucking retard? <laughs> and that's what he says to her. Because it's just some shitty kid looking at this teacher who's trying to be like a parent figure. And he's just like, I don't care what you're saying. You're dumb. Wow. Yeah, wow. that's literally that's in the comic. And I think these are written by Josh Whedon. Josh Whedon, yes. What did I say, Josh? Is it Josh? <laughs> Josh? Josh Whedon. Jo- Josh Whedon. <laughs> so yeah, um, the, I guess this is the the current hotness for um, speculators. But like, is Abigail Brand being in a movie? Why do people all of a sudden care about this book? Wait, wait, wait. Though, if she's not being in a movie, then that's then this is true. This is true comic book growth. If like, people are getting interested in a character who's not going to appear in a movie, but what drove the interest? Um, somebody who had a bunch of copies and wanted to get money. Do you think that's no? no but I don't <laughs> know. Like uh, I'm quickly looking up on um, Wikipedia. Oh, it's uh, marvel.fandom.com. She's just a, she's just a woman with like a green suit on and short green hair. Who is this? I've never heard of her. No, nah, I. She has a high tech gun. I don't know. She's female Cable. Who knows? She's also a mutant. I don't know. I, this. Blah. I don't care. This is yeah. a character that doesn't. It's a character that doesn't matter. That has no like. It's a character people are buying, and I never even heard of her. Now, how? What's it going for? Um, from the one sale that I saw that was shared to us, um, it was like, was it like 130 bucks or something for the two of them? Am I? Yes, it was 130 with no grading from, I don't want to say names from someone. (laughs) Yes. A a personal sale. Now this, yeah, this says that it was from six days and 11 hours ago, or maybe that's just that there's one bid at that point. So that's minimum. So it has six, it's, it has six days to go and somebody bid. Yeah. So somebody's going to pay 130 bucks for these two bucks, which we found out were also just in some like dollar bins and whatnot, <laughs> right? <laughs> they were they were books that other people had turned their nose up at and said, "I don't want these," and now they're suddenly hot, not worth 130 dollars. You know what? Um, if you go to Dollaramas in Canada, you can find the first appearance and first cameo of Ab- Abigail Brand in motion comic form because those those motion <laughs> comics are all throughout Dollaramas. <laughs> for wait, like wait, months. wait! First, ap- if it's a motion comic, can we slab that? I don't. I don't think they slab. You can slab DVDs with a different company, which I do not remember what they're called. But yes, you you can slab that technically. CTC, I want to slab a motion comic. <laughs> but I want it to be that you take a screen grab off the TV, print it out, and then slab the paper that it's on. Oh my God. Could you imagine? No, I'm trying to not imagine that. Let's be honest. Motion comics, like people say the comics are for kids who can't read. A motion comic is for somebody who literally cannot read. Um, I disagree. Like I have the Watchmen motion comic and I... I haven't watched it all the way through, but I've watched a little bit of it. And it's enjoyable. Like, it's kind of fun. They're also kind of annoying because you want a little more motion to the motion comics. You know? Have you seen any of the Marvel ones? <laughs> no, I haven't seen any of the Marvel ones. It's uh, it's <clears throat> they, they take the page and they kind of just like do that stretch animation where they'll kind of like move the thing so it kind of wiggles a bit. Like, it's it's not that lame, but it's not good. Yeah. But it's also a faithful, an absolutely faithful retelling of the story as opposed to when they make a movie or TV show about a character and change it to fit other things. Yeah, I want to know if people like put the motion comic on and then they have their issue on their lap and they kind of like do a read along. <laughs> you are inspiring me, my friend. You are <laughs> inspiring me. Yes. <laughs> I know what my Saturday night plans are. Uh, Watchmen <laughs> on the TV. Watchmen. With- yeah, Watchmen Blu-ray, comic book in my lap, maybe a beer or two, we'll see. I don't know about the Marvel ones, but like the Watchmen one, like it's the same guy doing all the voices, including the women's voices. <gasps> so he'll be reading and he'll be like, you know, Dr. Manhattan turned and looked at them and said, you don't deserve to live. But Dr. Manhattan, you do. We do deserve to live, said so-and-so. And you're like, oh, this is, this is, this is bad. So bad. 